today, let's talk about a strange appearance. And by that, I mean the appearance of something strange. I'm going to read to you from 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 11 and 12, where we read this. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. He sought to hear from Samuel in a way God never approved of. Through a spirit medium, who was an agent of Satan, not God. Yet when this witch of Endor tried to conjure the presence of the past prophet, we read, When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. She seemed more surprised than anyone else. The woman was probably shocked because she was a fraud, and most of her dealings with the spirit realm were tricks. Here, it seems, Samuel really appeared from the world beyond, and she was completely surprised to have a real encounter with the spirit realm. In addition, we can say that this medium was familiar with the presence of demonic spirits, but the presence of the Holy Spirit was probably unfamiliar to her. The holy presence of the Holy Spirit could have seemed terrifying to her. We are not told how the medium knew that it was Samuel. It might have been something that Samuel said when he first appeared. It might have been through a word of supernatural knowledge communicated to her, either from God or from the world of the demonic. Nevertheless, 1 Samuel chapter 28 tells us that she thought it was Samuel, and Saul thought it also. However, Samuel appeared. He was visible, at least in some way, to both the medium and to Saul. This wasn't a crystal ball appearance that only the medium could pretend to see, nor was it a voice in the dark as in some strange seance. This was a real appearance of Samuel. Now, this strange incident is controversial, and several different approaches have been used to understand this passage. Here are four of the most commonly suggested possibilities. Number one, some people believe that this was a hallucination of the medium. But I don't think this makes sense, because it doesn't explain why the medium was so frightened. It also doesn't explain why Saul also saw Samuel, and why Samuel spoke to Saul, not to the medium. Secondly, some believe that this was a deception by the medium. But this also isn't an adequate explanation for the same reasons given to the previous suggestion. Number three, some people believe that this was a demonic impersonation of Samuel. It's possible that the medium, with her occult powers, summoned a demonic spirit that deceived both her and Saul. But this suggestion is, at least in my opinion, also inadequate because it does not speak to the issue of motive. After all, what advantage did Satan gain by what Samuel said to Saul? Some people believe, and put myself in this category, that this was a genuine but strange appearance of Samuel. I think this is the best explanation because it is supported by the reaction of the medium who got more than she bargained for. It's also supported by the truth of what Samuel said. And the text says that Samuel said it. Some may say that it's impossible for Samuel to reappear in some way, coming from the world beyond back to this world. But Moses and Elisha also came from the world beyond back to this world when they appeared with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. Though it is strange, it's best to say that Samuel really came, but not because the medium called for him. Samuel appeared because God had a special purpose for it. God allowed this strange appearance of Samuel because it accomplished two things. Number one, in a dramatic way, it reconfirmed the coming judgment upon King Saul. And number two, 
It taught the medium a powerful lesson about the danger of her occult craft. Friends, when we close our ears to God, he will find unusual and perhaps uncomfortable ways to speak to us. So so let's not be like that. Let's open up our ears and our hearts and our minds to what God says to us, especially what he says to us in and through his word. Then God won't need to speak to us through some strange appearance, but rather through his eternal and living and ever blessed word. We can have that kind of mentality before the Lord and as we live our life today.